And uh, I would like to say to my friend, uh, Mr. Perlmutter, actually to the chairman, if it's all right, I think we should have our own sticker that says 2032. We, uh, we don't want to settle for 2033. Republicans ought to go for 2032. <laughs> in 1982, uh, President Reagan reorganized our uh, Navy's nuclear propulsion program, citing the need to preserve structures and policies while ensuring the program continues to function smoothly and efficiently. He ordered that the director of this program of great national import be appointed for an eight-year term. This change ensured that the leadership and direction of our nuclear Navy remained constant over at least, at least two presidential cycles, if not multiple administrations. Likewise, NASA is an agency carrying out programs of national importance, which by their very nature take years, as Dr. Griffin just talked about, if not decades, to formulate, develop, and carry out. It makes complete sense to me to remove the administrator of NASA from the political cycles in order to allow for continuity and stability. I am proud to be a co-sponsor of Chairman Culberson's bill, which proposes a 10-year term for the NASA administrator. The Space Foundation's pioneering doctrine uh, recommends a term of five years. I am working on legislation that includes a pr provision that establishes a five-year term as well. Regardless of the number, however, it seems that there is growing consensus among stakeholders and advocates to set the length of the administrator's term beyond the standard political cycles. Ms. Chaplin, uh, while you focus mostly on space programs, have you gotten a sense from your time at GO GAO of the differences in how NASA acquisitions differ from those of government agencies uh, that are run by non-political or non-traditional heads? Have you seen a difference in how those acquisition strategies go? Most of the agencies with large acquisitions and complex ones like NASA do have political appointees. Um, we don't get too much insight into the Intel world and that might be something to look at, but they're still political there too. Um, so I, I don't have a model there to look at. There are other situations, um, agencies that have longer term tenures for administrators. Um, GAO is actually one of them. We have a 15 year appointment for our Comptroller General, and the purpose is to keep the politics out of our work. Sure. So there are other good models out there. And, and but it, w w from your assessment, uh, and maybe you don't make assessments since you're with GAO, but uh, those kind of models, are, are they better uh, at? We, we don't have one that, that looks at that from an acquisition perspective. Okay. There's also other space agencies internationally that have boards and different structures that could be looked at, but we haven't done that ourselves. Okay. And Mr. Griffin, uh, when you think about some of the stumbles, uh, obviously <laughs> your testimony today at the beginning, talking about um, you know 2010 and beyond uh, with NASA and some of the stumbles that we've encountered, uh, if, if your term had been extended and you would have been the administrator, can, can you share with us how things might have been different? Uh, well, sir, I don't, I don't know that they would have been because administrators and appointees take orders from the chief executive. I see. If the chief executive really wanted to change the space program, then I would have had the choice of either following orders or resigning. Had I been given the orders that my successor was given, I would have resigned. Um, because I thought that, as I've said now multiple times, I thought that the direction of, of Congress uh, in 2005 and 8 was extraordinarily good. I believed we were on the right path and should maintain it. Uh, therefore, if ordered to, go, to deviate from that path, I, I would not have remained. I, I think, again, the issue, I, I have no objection to considering uh, a five-year term, a six-year term, an eight-year term, what, whatever length of term for the administrator, nor do I have any objection with the way it's done today. I think these kinds of discussions are a symptom of the problem we face, which is a lack of understanding at the top levels of government of the importance of our space program and the need to, to have both a quality program and stability of that program. I'll, I'll use another analogy. If we treated the Air Force 
as we do the space program, we wouldn't have any flying aircraft. We, 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 would, we cannot decide every few years what we want the purpose of the space program to be. We have to have a societal level agreement as to that purpose uh, and, and then let our uh, appointed officials carry it, it out. And it, it almost doesn't make any difference to me how they are appointed or what their term is. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I yield back.